What I'm going to be doing is showing you the five things I think you need to do when you install a fresh version of Manjaro. I did the same type of video with Pop OS and you all seemed to like it, so I decided to do this for my favorite operating system, Manjaro. One thing I will know is there will be a text article version of this entire video on techhut.tv, link in the description down below, if you want to see all the commands, download links, and things like that. The first item in this list is actually a couple different things. It involves updating, doing some performance tweaks, and some security settings, but they're also short and easy. I combined it all into one. So, without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump onto the system and check out these five things you should do after installing Manjaro Linux. The only thing I've really done on this system is install OBS Studio and some of its dependencies, so this is as fresh of an install as I can get. So jumping right into it, what you're going to want to do is go down and open up the terminal. And we're going to do some uh, system updates, some security changes, and some just overall settings improvement. So the first thing we're going to do is the sudo pacman mirrors command. And what this is going to do, it's going to ping all the different servers available for Manjaro software and Manjaro updates and figure out which one is faster. So after you do this from here on out, it will use the fastest server to download anything that it needs from the official repositories. Now this will take a little bit to run once you start the process. I would say probably three to seven minutes depending on how fast your internet is. But when it runs all the way through this, it will have automatically selected and saved the best miner for you. So from here, we could go ahead and move on and update our system. And in order to do this, we just type in sudo pacman-syyu and what that's going to do is scan all the databases, download everything, and check everything for updates. I already did this because I needed to do it to download the screen recording software, but you might have a lot of stuff to download here depending on how old the ISO is that you installed. And now what we're going to do is type in this command, the enable FS trim and what this is going to do if you have an SSD if you don't have an SSD you don't need to run this but this will keep a uh, system service running that will kind of free up free space on your SSD if you want to learn more about this there'll be a link in the description but you can go ahead and hit enter and it will enable that service and now what we're going to do is enable a firewall and to do this you're going to want to type in sudo pacman syu firewalled and what that's going to do, it's going to pull files and install the firewall available. It's going to ask you if you want to go ahead and proceed with the installation. Just hit Y and enter, and then it will install firewalled. Now we're going to want to actually enable the firewall. So to do this, you type in sudo systemct1 enable now firewalled service. Go ahead and hit enter, and now the firewall is enabled. Down in the link in the description, you can learn more about the configuration, but now all the default settings will be enabled. Now the last thing for our updating segment is to update the kernel. This isn't necessarily required, but I do recommend it if you want the latest and greatest bleeding edge software. So I'm going to go into kernel, and you can see that I'm currently running the 5.6 kernel. Uh, the 5.8 and 5.7 is available. 5.7 is a, a pretty good one. I'm going to go with the 5.8 even though it's experimental. If you're new to Linux, I would recommend not even touching this until you kind of get more familiarized with it. Because it could cause problems if you do update your kernel and it's not necessarily ready. Uh, anyone that says LTS or recommended, you should be fine with. So if one above what you're currently running says LTS or recommended, Go ahead and update to it and you won't have any worries. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and go with this experimental one. Click on yes, type in the password, and it's going to go ahead and download that kernel. Now another thing, I do not recommend removing kernels even if you're not using them. Unless if it's a really old one and you've upgraded a few times and it's been stable. Uh, for me, like the 5.6 one I have, I will not be removing that until I either know for sure that 5.6 is completely fine or until they release an LTS one. So here we can go ahead and click on show details just to kind of see what it's doing. And when this is all done, we're actually going to need to reboot our system to make sure that it's working. And I will go ahead and do that and show you that it is running the latest kernel. So now with this done, I'm going to hit close. I'm going to close this out. 
I'm going to open up the terminal again, just so we kind of get more familiar with using the terminal for normal things. I'm going to do sudo reboot, and I'll be right back. So now that our system has completely rebooted, we could go ahead and open up those Manjaro settings again. So you just type in Manj and go to Manjaro settings. And here we can open up the kernel. And then we can see that we are currently running and have installed the latest experimental build of the kernel. Like I said, I do recommend you go with a LTS or recommended, especially if you are newer. But I wanted to go ahead and try this out and see if some of the improvements are actually working properly. So now the second item on this list is going to be auto mounting hard drives. You see here I have a desktop computer. There are a couple different hard drives in it that I have different uses for. So I want the hard drive to automatically mount on startup. It is one of the more difficult things on this list and you, if you don't plan on having any additional hard drives in your system, you could go ahead and skip this. You can see here based on this icon that none of these drives are mounted yet. I can mount them just by simply opening up the drive and you can see it mounted, but that does not help us if we want to have things kind of automated in the future. So we are going to automatically mount this and for this example I'm going to automatically mount this backup drive here. And to do this what we're going to want to do is get some information on the drive, particularly the UUID. So to do this you can open up the uh, KDE Partition Manager. Or if you're running a different version or different environment of Manjaro, you could go ahead and use whatever disk manager you prefer. And now we're going to go ahead and find the drive. We see this is the backup, so I could just go ahead and find the backup drive. Now, if you don't have labels and you're not sure, you could check with the mounting point. So this is dev sdb1. If I go over here, right click on the drive, go to properties, you can see that this is the sdb1. So we are good to go. So from here, we're going to want to right click on the actual drive and get the properties of it. And here is where we can find our UUID. This ID is given to all the drives on your computer. It will never change and it, your system will be able to use this UUID to automatically mount the drive. So to do this, what we're going to want to do is open up our terminal. So go to the terminal and we are going to make a directory for the drive to automatically mount to. So if I go make directory dash media, hit enter. Now we've created that media directory. And this is where you're gonna to want to mount these drives. Now you could theoretically do this wherever you want, but I it is just kind of easier and this is how it's commonly done. So now we're going to make directory. Actually, we gotta go sudo make directory. And then you're gonna to want to go into the media and we're gonna to want to call this backup or you could call it whatever you'd like. So go ahead and enter and now that should be created. You could always double check this by opening up your file manager, going into the very root of your system and ensuring that there is a uh, media and backup. And this is going to be our future mounting point right here. Now to do this we're going to need to go into the terminal and edit a file. So to do this we're going to type in sudo nano E T C F stab F stab just like this hit enter and you can see it right here is the file we're going to edit I do highly suggest you be very careful in here if you mess with any of this right here you will have issues booting into your system because this is essentially the uh, mounting point for your boot drive so to mount this what we're going to do is kind of move our little cursor down here uh, give it some space and I'm going to do a little hashtag just so I could put a note for myself and I can say that this is the uh, mount point for backup and then note the actual drive so I'm going to just do uh, dash dev dash s db1 close that off and now we're going to actually write our entry so to do this you're going to want to type uu id equals and then get the UUID, so I'm going to go over here, copy that, paste it on in there, and then once it's pasted, you're going to hit the tab key and then type in the directory that you're going to want to mount it to. So we created that earlier, so that's just simply media backup. You're going to want to hit the tab key again and type in the file system type, for this is a ext4. You can see the type of file system right here. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the tab key again, 
and type in defaults. Now there are settings here that you could change if you know exactly what you're doing, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just gonna type in defaults, hit tab, to zero, tab, zero. Just like that, and now when I go ahead and save this, it will automatically mount this drive. So to save it, you can see there's an option to write out right here, so that it's just control and zero. And then you're gonna to want to uh, name the file to write and just keep it as is. Go ahead and hit enter. And now it is saved. So we can go ahead and exit this by going control X. And now we have exited out of the nano text editor. So now I'm gonna go ahead and actually restart my system and make sure that this mounts automatically. And then when we go in here, we should see a different mount point. All right, so now we are booted back into Manjaro, and the very first thing I'm gonna do is open up my file manager. And I can see here that the backup is automatically mounted because it doesn't have that icon there, so that means it was successful. And now we're just gonna jump into the disks partition manager, just like we did last time, and check that mounting point. So to go ahead and type in your password there, wait for this to load, and then I'm gonna go ahead and find my backup, and you can see it's correct right there. It is mounted in media backup, just as we expected. And then we could even triple check this and go into the root, go into media, and then backup. You can see that the uh, folder is the actual drive. So if I open up backup, we are in media backup. So that was successful, and now that will make our life easier down the road. The third item on this list is enabling AUR or the Arch Repository. There are going to be programs here and there that you want to download that aren't available on the official repository, so you're going to want to enable this in your preferences. So to enable that, you just go to Preferences, type in your password, and then from here, you're going to want to go to the AUR tab. And then this is, it gives you a little warning here. This is community maintained. Basically, Manjaro does not maintain these directories. I'm going to go ahead and enable this. And then let's go ahead and keep builds and cache. Check for updates. I'm not going to check for developmental updates. And the temp directory is fine. And we could go ahead and close this out. Now, I'm going to show you a quick example. Um, if I were to look up Caden uh, Live. You can see that there is now the official repository and a bunch of different things from the R. Now, I will note that if there is an re official repository of an application available, I would highly recommend you go ahead and go with that. But there are cases that the application that you want is not available from the official repositories, so that is when you're going to want to have this R enabled. And there will be an application later in the video that we're going to talk about that will need this uh, checked and enabled to install. The fourth item on this list is going to be enabling automated backups. So let's jump on. It's through time shift, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, chances are there are going to be uh, tweaks. You're going to want to mess around with your system, and you're going to want to change things that are kind of risque. And now that is why it is important to have a backup or a snapshot of your system at any given time in which you can then back up to. So to do that, we're going to be using Time Shift. It's automatically installed on our computer. So we went ahead and opened it up here, and then we see the setup wizard. So we're going to select the snapshot type. You could go ahead and kind of view this if you want to. You could go with the RYNC or the BTRFS. I recommend going with this one. It just saves time, and it's a lot easier. Go ahead and click Next, and then it's going to go through a process of estimating your system size. It's basically scanning your root, not your root, but all your um, system directories. And now we're gonna select a snapshot location. Now this is kind of why we did step two. I'm gonna use this backup drive right here. And now that I also know that the drive is automatically mounted, that will never be an issue in the future. So I'm gonna select the backup drive on my computer for the automatic mount. Depending on what drive you select, all it's gonna really do is create a folder called time shift in the uh, root directory of whatever drive, and then save the snapshots there. So I could go ahead and click on finish, and then there should be a folder in there called uh, time shift. But before I go ahead and look at that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you me creating a snapshot. So right here, it's gonna go ahead and scan all my files, sync them all up into one snapshot that we can load later. 
So once it's all done here, you can see that it created the snapshot for this time and date. And if we ever wanted to, we go ahead and click on it and restore to that point. If, for example, you changed the setting and it really kind of screwed something up on your computer. Uh, I would recommend you open up the settings. And from here, you're going to set a schedule. Now, this is how often your system is automatically going to create snapshots. You could have it do it daily, hourly, on boot, weekly, or monthly. For me, I go ahead and do daily. I keep five of them. I also add a weekly to keep three of them. And I do a monthly one just so I can kind of revert back a long time if I needed to. Go ahead and click OK. And then we are all set up and good to go. And I will show you the directory real quick that I was talking about. If I go into the backup drive, you can see that now there is a folder here called Time Shift. If I open that up, there's all your folders for the uh, scheduling. So you're on boot, daily, hourly. So after a while, this will start to fill up and it'll keep some snapshots, but I've created one. So this is the snapshot I created. So now that we have all that set up, we can go ahead and close out of that. Last but not least, here are a couple of utilities that I think everybody should have installed on their Manjaro operating system. So the very first thing, I'm gonna kind of show you an example here. Go ahead and edit this. I'm gonna open it with Sublime Text. Now Sublime Text is an absolutely wonderful text editor that I would recommend anybody use, especially if you plan on doing any type of system configuration or anything at all. Now it's super, super nice. It's, I'm not gonna be able to go over all the features. It's incredibly feature rich. You could do programming in it, has a tab system so you can have multiple things going at once. The thing I really like about it is this preview window right here. You can just kind of drag and go to exactly where you wanna be and see what's ahead and just click around and it's just really, really nice. It's very user friendly, it's clean and I always install and set this as my default text editor. Next, believe it or not, is going to be VLC. Everybody needs a VLC on their Linux machine. It can play just about any file format. It's beautiful and it's completely loaded with all sorts of different tools. So you could use it to convert videos to different formats, record your screen and much, much more. Now the third and final thing is something that we're going to need the Arch repository for. So I can go ahead and show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead and search here, we're going to search for Stacer. So we search it up and you can see Stacer is only available through the AUR and there's no official repository. I'm going to go ahead and install it. This one right here looks a little cleaner and it's from uh, Stacer bin. So I'm going to build this one, apply it, and then it will begin the installation process and finish up. So we're going to open up Stacer. Stacer is a absolutely wonderful system monitor for your Linux system. I've talked about this before. It monitors your CPU memory, your disk usage, gives you a host of system information, and it's I would compare it to CCleaner on Windows with some of the different tools and utilities it has, such as... Uh, cleaning your cache, application logs, your trash bins, has other things, so it kind of has a service monitor here. You can enable and disable service. You completely search your system through it. It has a uninstaller and a um, graphical system monitor here. Overall, it's just a great application to have on your system. And speaking of programs, I will have two videos right here with more software that I would recommend right there is for content creators, so video editing, audio editing, things like that. Right here is going to be general purpose applications that everybody can use. If you have more suggestions or if you think I left anything out, leave them down below. Make sure you go ahead and check out that comment section because there's bound to be more things that you can do to get a running head start into Manjaro Linux. And that about wraps that up. Like this video if it has helped you out in any sort of way. Have a great day and goodbye. Oh, come here, GZ. Oh, who's a good girl?